the, the idea is really to uh, yes give a perspective on pricing strategy using taxonomy but also very pragmatically also give some of it the example right that we have the the, uh, the advantage right probably of having a lot of countries a lot of data points so we did build a lot of uh, um, information and data um, probably even too much data since there was a comment earlier um uh, and again the idea is sharing some of the of the key learnings and uh, hopefully have a more interactive discussion uh, later on um maybe i mean before we go into the taxonomy just a quick uh, high level on uh, uh, what revenue does since that's always uh, some of the first question that i get asked and again here i think the, the, the interesting part is how is it in relation to taxonomy right but again uh, what we do is really uh, around uh, optimizing uh, uh, revenue given the profitability constraints how that is done uh, is uh, um, i would say two parallel paths one is a bit more short to midterm whereby uh, we focus more on conversion and uh, abs which is order value optimization being an online business uh, while the second path is a bit more mid the long term uh, which is much more around uh, conversion and active based optimization right so in order to do this as you can see we have five uh, sub uh, sub departments uh, and here, I mean, we highlighted what are the, I would say, three key things that they take care of. But I think in this context, what is interesting is where taxonomy come into play. And you can see that it's, of course, in pricing across. So I think pricing team couldn't exist right, without a stronger taxonomy or classification, but it goes beyond pricing. Uh, so it touches merchandising, CRM and revenue analytics, right? So although the focus today is specifically on pricing, very important to consider also other areas in terms of, I would say, conversion optimization and performance optimization, which might be touched by uh, taxonomy. And again, we'll share some high level learning at the, at the end as well. Uh, but again, the focus is pricing. So let's, uh, let's go a little bit deeper uh, in pricing. So, I mean, pricing, uh, the way we consider pricing is uh, in buckets, right? So there are different price that uh, we consider. In general, price, of course, is uh, the value at which a customer is willing to exchange money or currency for uh, for a specific product, right? So it's usually a, a measure of value, which means that the first uh, real element, right, of pricing, which is the RRP, which is or what uh, in the industry is often called black, black price, uh, becomes what in general we consider the market value uh, of the product, right? And again, behind the decision of, of, of the price, and I think building also on what Ruth was sharing earlier, there are a lot of consideration, right? And I, I, I read some of the comments, some people are working in merchandisers, so probably would feel familiar with this problem of how do I price my, uh, my assortment? And again, whether it's a retailer, whether it's a brand or a buyer, uh, they're usually a long list of, uh, of questions, right? That uh, uh, the person or the institution ask before setting the price and again if we, we when we go back and look at this question most of them are really around classification then whether it's a very specific product classification or more general it really boils down at how, how many granular elements right we want to have because of course if the product has a specific specific attribute or a specific characteristic that diversify it more from the rest this will increase that value right that is also what then price should be um, should be set uh, uh, around so i think there's a, a very important element setting the price and maybe this is more for higher assortment brands or industry but at least our learning is that demand is a pretty uh, is distributed in a very continuous way right so it's a uh, it's not clustered by groups or more discrete distribution, but it's really continuous, right? And continuous means that for whoever study fitting in, uh, and, and statistics and, and it's the more granular you go, the more, the better fit you have, right? So this means that you're going to be able to go uh, more granular in a specific characteristic or a specific value and therefore really refining uh, the right value for the right uh, for the right demand in the market right and therefore having uh, having your supply so our learning over the years has always been that uh, as we grow uh, there's always value even in initial price to go more uh, granular so here of course we uh, we call out some of the uh, the most important ones which are actually the one that we use uh, now so in, in our line sheets uh, we usually have a collaboration right between revenue team and uh, uh, merchandising and planning to 
come up with a comprehensive assortment planning by price point also leveraging previous performance. The second element of it, which I think can uh, uh, um, somehow suggest at the beginning is the competition side of it, right? So what I mentioned so far is looking inwards, but again, being a very connected and transparent uh, uh, environment is also important to look outwards, right? And what we are doing, some other competitors are, are doing and the customer is getting more and more brand uh, um, indifferent, I would say, right? Whereby so much convenience online is bringing uh, price and value to be even more important uh, than before, right? So this uh, allows us also to look at competition and uh, uh, somehow close that gap between internal, so a more supply view uh, and external to really come up with the, uh, with the best price point. All of these, of course, triangulated with uh, a lot of historical data, whereby uh, previous price points, which is usually how the customer is hooked, uh, in the sense that if you if you were to think about a specific subcategory, most likely there is uh, what we call sweet uh, spot, right? The right price point for the specific uh, subcategory. It's pretty clear in terms of distribution by assortment, uh, but the more granular you go, the more sweet spots you find, and therefore more optimal initial pricing strategy you can have, which is really how you bring, uh, um, you bring uh, uh, the product to the market. Um, the last point I think on setting uh, uh, the RRP is that having such an organized uh, way uh, of having merchandising and overall uh, the assortment uh, really allows uh, not only to be organized for the customer, but also organized internally, right? And this brings a lot of ownership so that you can subdivide more granularly who is the owner for which, uh, which part. And also, of course, increase the uh, automation, right? Which brings me to the last point, which uh, again, we are particularly focused on, which is flawless execution, right? Whereby uh, it's an active part uh, of uh, uh, strategy. And again, we shouldn't be considered right, as a subsequent step of strategy, but really execution, I would say, is probably the most important part of strategy, right? So having something that allows you to act in an organized manner and structural manner uh, will make it succeed in even more. So we spoke about initial price. This is just an example, but I mentioned it before, right? whereby you can go as granular as you want and uh, further refine price. So this is just some actual visual example from our system, whereby we start with a visual representation and then we start to drill down to find better distribution by, uh, by price. The second lever on discount, which is, uh, of course, what especially customer in, uh, in Southeast Asia likes, uh, likes more, is discount, right? So uh, this can be uh, red price, red pen, there are different ways of calling it, but uh, it's really about uh, discount. And for us, discount, at least uh, from our standpoint, uh, we approach it in slightly different ways. So we usually have three types of discount. One is what we call inventory pricing discount. One is competitive pricing discount. And one is the revenue optimization uh, pricing discount. I mean, I think the names are pretty self-explanatory, but uh, one is the price that you need to optimize your sell-through curve. One is the price that you need to optimize uh, revenue. And one is the price that you need to be competitive. Uh, in the ideal world, they match. In the practical world, they never do. Uh, so part of the pricing strategy is which one takes precedence, right? And which, which order of priorities we want, to, we want to. So if we consider inventory price, but also revenue optimization, uh, taxonomy or in general a better classification on top of the advantage that we we saw so far what allows to do and again what that has allowed us to do over the years is having a much bigger set of data which not only brings you a better decision on the spot but also build uh, your uh, your pricing algorithm right so uh, what we did over the year is growing our internal pricing algorithm together with the growth of taxonomy and basically every season we add new variables to the uh, to the algorithm right then of course the algorithm can optimize for sell through can optimize for revenue can optimize for absolute profit absolute profitability that doesn't really matter i think the important part is that the proper classification uh, allows the algorithm to outperform so not only you get a better uh, pricing strategy, but also a better, for example, inventory clearance, because you see that a subset of dresses is more or less elastic in a given market versus something else. Right? Um, so I think this is, a, 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 I would say, a positive feedback loop, whereby the more you categorize, the more you learn, the more data you have, and, and, and so on. Right? The second area, um, which uh, it's probably 
uh, where taxonomy is absolutely crucial is uh, uh, price matching, right? So price matching after you have your initial price is really about how do you stay competitive, right? Because it's a very dynamic industry. The price barely stays the same for more than uh, a few days actually lately. Uh, this means that even if you are competitive at the beginning, doesn't mean that you're gonna, you're gonna be competitive throughout. And especially for some subset of product which can be considered a bit more commoditized so that you can find in, uh, in multiple sources the customer pretty clearly uh, compares more and more the price, right? So you know which product you want, you search for it, and you go for the cheapest price, assuming that there is the same level of, of service, right? Now, in this one, of course, it becomes crucial. And again, that's pretty much the early advantage, right, that also Hendrix was, uh, was mentioning. Um, but here, of course, taxonomy allows you to go as granular as possible and take different type of uh, uh, decision which if you are too, if you are not granular enough, you are either not going to be taking or you are not going to be able to uh, do in a proper way, right? So for example, we had a few examples, for example, for us, we're, we're very strong in dresses and we always have the situation whereby we compare with uh, some of the competitors, but we realize that only some sub part of the dress collection is uh, repriced, right? And we used to have only midi, midi dresses as a, as a granular categorization while we realized that if we go a few levels deeper, and again, some of this we actually had to do them manually. Uh, we, we didn't get yet into the full automation, but once you start to go into the party dress or even more night party dress, like you realize that uh, you get an edge on competition because you uh, can understand which subset of the assortment you are, not more, you are not competitive anymore and reprice only that part while staying uh, maybe more expensive or more uh, or, or with a different pricing strategy in another one, right? So uh, if you didn't have that categorization of night party dress, you would have only to do it on party dress or even more on mini dress or only on dresses, right? So uh, this allows you more uh, granular intervention, which really fits into what I was saying earlier of uh, demand being distributed in a continuous way, right? That's really the key whereby the more granular you go, the better fit uh, between supply and demand you're gonna, uh, you're gonna have. Uh, in other cases, uh, and this one, for example, we are seeing in luxury, uh, having a clear strategy on price competition, uh, specifically on taxonomy allows us to also build the trust with some of the brand that maybe wants to have uh, a specific pricing strategy, right? And this one for us is uh, mostly on, on luxury where, I mean, we being a retailer uh, needs to sell uh, other brands, right? And But I would say it also works in your favor whereby it also holds uh, the supplier accountable, right? Because as a retailer, you always want to have the best possible deal and having a clear understanding of how your assortment at the most granular level behave versus competition allows you to also go back to the supplier and push back, right? If, if you are a retailer uh, in this specific case. Again, this one is a, a pretty uh, a simple uh, uh, chart, which is actually what uh, our team uses internally, right? So the various, uh, the various steps that, uh, that we take um, to go to more more granular. Um, a couple of examples that I thought could have, could, 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 been, uh, help, could have been helpful, right? Are um, one around, uh, um, uh, one example, right? Of a, a very important uh, uh, categorization, which is, uh, Stock availability, but PLC is, uh, we call it product life cycle, right? So um, it's not just about knowing which product we price with subcategory, but also about which occasion specifically you're going to be having. And for us, for example, Raya, we have a very specific stock, but we know that the selling window is four to eight weeks, right? It's not more than that. Um, and again, this one, having the level of granular categorization by its skew level on top of the normal product attributes, uh, dramatically improve the performance, right? Because it allows us to really customize the pricing strategy at the most granular level and ensuring that we do give the best assortment in the right, uh, in the right period, right? The other example, again, is, uh, is, uh, is on shoes, um, whereby, again, as everybody has more assortment and there's more visibility going more granular, right? And really uh, finding out which specific shape and which specific... Uh, form of product uh, can allow you also to create campaign around it and position yourself as a leading in that specific subset. The last point on this on, on price, I mean, we always speak about taking price down, but what about taking price up, right? And I think it works exactly in the same way, but the other way around, right? So for example, if you are 
uh, if the competitor announces a stock uh, on some special collection, which you know to serve a very specific target of customer, and you are way more competitive, why don't you still keep that competitiveness, but repricing a little bit? That is just going to make still the customer happy and your margin better, right? Or we're experiencing a very high degree of uh, supply chain uncertainties, which means that some of the basic raw material are lacking lately. So a very specific subset of product can uh, have a reprice because of this, right? These are the key learning that I had, and I would say Zalora pricing had related to taxonomy, uh, which we thought helpful sharing with the group. So one, I mean, it's pretty straightforward, but average are pretty bad. And I would say anyone working in taxonomy would agree. Uh, of course, going more granular uh, allows uh, better action. In pricing specifically, is really about the continuity, right, of the demand curve. Uh, any pricing action should consider uh, taxonomy or a proper categorization, any pricing, right? So anytime that the price is changed, whether it's set, repriced, uh, discounted, any form of pricing. Of course, uh, the third point is what we, we were talking about, the dynamic trading, right? And uh, uh, reacting faster, but I think especially on the online portion, it also allows to further refine the communication, right? And more granular communication, which is then followed through by a proper execution, it builds even more trust in the customer. So he enhances the pricing performance because it's very specific and speaks to a very specific target. Um, then the better category uh, and cleaner product assortment not only serves all these, I would say, um, top line benefit, but also clarify internal ownership and improve the execution. Uh, and then again, I'm, I'm not sure of the different audience, but for us specifically, uh, the more granular you go in taxonomy, this will impact your category tree structure and therefore increase the complexity, right? So it's something to be handled with care. And I think also uh, someone was saying, right, let's start gradually, right? You don't need to do it fully automated right away. And it's something that needs to be increased in complexity over time and needs to grow within the business, right? Um, and the last one, for this above reason, build it in phases. We went to granular too fast with some of the ERP implementation and we pay the price for it, right? While now we, 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 we can afford to go a bit more granular. And again, not everything needs to be granular the same way. Right? So the bigger subcategory and focus on those ones, which are also the ones that are gonna drive uh, the biggest value. Um, just to finish, I mean, beyond pricing, because I think these are other learning that's probably worth sharing. Uh, one, it's very likely that the customer you're serving knows more about taxonomy than you. And I think we tend to forget about that, whereby uh, whoever buys, especially in fashion, is usually quite competent and knows exactly what she or he is looking for. So don't underestimate that component. And uh, that, I mean, shows that it's something that is important and is probably expected, right? Um, then, of course, the more granular you go, the better impact you have also on engagement. I mean, whether it's CRM or on-site messaging or any any sort of targeted specific messaging. Search, I think, was mentioning before, and I mean, the, 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 the benefits on search are non-linear, absolutely, uh, because the more granular, it just grows exponentially. And then I think on the, on the back end, uh, very cautious on the, uh, on the ERP system. Uh, and then last point is... Uh, uh, the, the, the cohort, right? So, I mean, we know that we are going into a hyper-personalization kind of uh, kind of world. That this is really one of the important steps, right? To uh, to go in that uh, in that direction.